I'm going to add a little security to my home today by installing this Ring video doorbell. And this Ring doorbell will notify me whenever anyone comes to my front door. It'll take video of them, it detects motion, it will allow me to talk to them and they can talk to me. And what I had before was just an old style doorbell. So this will give me added security while still notifying me when someone comes to the door. And here's what's in the box. You get the Ring doorbell. This is the second generation video doorbell released in 2020. You get an installation tool that has two separate tips on it for different functions. You get all the installation hardware you need, a USB charging cord, a drill bit, and a user guide. You even get a sticker to put on your door or window saying that your home is protected by rain. The first thing you should do to get ready for the installation is to charge up the doorbell. Use the included USB charging cord and disconnect it to an existing power supply that you have. They don't include a power supply because I think nowadays they assume everybody has these laying around. The doorbell has a built-in rechargeable battery and you want to get that completely charged up before you start the installation. And you'll know it's completely charged when this ring on the front of the doorbell is completely blue all the way around. And you can power the doorbell simply off of the built-in rechargeable battery, but you can also hardwire it into an existing doorbell power supply. If you already have a doorbell, it has wires running to it that you can use to power the Ring doorbell. Once you've got the doorbell charging, you should download the Ring app to your phone, set up an account, then later we'll use the app to set up the doorbell and be sure that it's functioning properly. Within the app it lets you choose set up a device and we're going to choose doorbells. Scan the QR code or Mac ID barcode on your Ring device. And on mine the code is right on the back of the doorbell. And once you scan that barcode, it'll guide you through the setup process and get your Ring doorbell ready for use. I already took off the old doorbell button. The Ring doorbell works with either the inner rechargeable battery and you just have to recharge it when it runs down, or you can wire it, which is what I'm gonna do. The voltage is low to this. I checked it with a voltmeter and it was about 12 volts, but I still turned off the power at the breaker just to be safe. And the Ring doorbell is compatible with any existing doorbell power supply that runs from 8 to 24 volts. Like I said, mine was right around 12, so we're good. It has a mounting bracket on the back of it, so I'm going to take that off. We need to use that bracket as a template, and that'll just pop right off the back. I'm going to hold this up to the wall now and use these holes as a template for my screws. It also comes with three special security screws to attach the doorbell to the mounting bracket securely and to prevent theft of it. And you also get a small bubble level and that helps you mount the bracket and the doorbell correctly. This side of the bracket will go against the wall. So I flip that over and I'm going to put the little bubble level right in there. And that snaps right into place. And when you take the old doorbell off, make sure these wires don't slip down into the wall. You're going to need those, and it's going to be hard to pull them out if they do slip back in. And the ideal height to mount this is four feet above the ground. Mine's going to be a little bit higher because it's up a step and a half or so, so I might need to get what they call a wedge kit, but we'll see how it works. I'm going to position my bracket like that. It covers up the screw holes that were in there from the old doorbell and has plenty of room for the wires to come out. So now I'm going to mark my screw holes. I've got my holes marked now and I'm just screwing these into wood so I don't need to use the masonry bit that came with it because I'm not drilling into concrete or brick anything like that. And use that level to make sure you're getting this mounted parallel to the ground. The included screwdriver is reversible, so to put in the bracket screws you want to have it with the Phillips head out, like that. Screws are going in pretty easy, and we're still level. I've got two of the screws in already, so I'm just going to take the level out. Okay, the bracket's mounted. Now we need to hook up the wires to the back of the doorbell. And using that same end of the screwdriver, I'm going to connect these two wires to these two terminals on the back of the doorbell. And it doesn't matter which one you hook to which terminal. It'll work either way. It was a little bit of an odd angle, but I was able to get those screwed on there. I also pulled the wire out a little bit more from inside the wall. So the more length of wire you have to work with, the easier it'll be to attach these. I'm going to attach the doorbell to the wall now. This lip will go on there, 
and I'll have to push the wires back in a little bit to do that. And then it swings down at the bottom and attaches over these little tabs that stick out. It's hooked on now and already feels sturdy, but I need to fasten it down with the two security screws that go in at the bottom. They gave us three, but I only need two. And to attach those, you reverse the included screwdriver, flip that around, and you use this star-shaped tip to fasten down those two security screws at the bottom. These screws are an anti-theft device. Unless someone has this ring screwdriver, they can't get it off and get away with it. So that's a nice feature. It's installed and ready to go. Now I just need to turn the power back on and try it out. And this is a live view of what my Ring doorbell is seeing using the Ring app on my phone. It works great and I get notifications when anybody comes up to the door. I can talk to them, they can talk to me and it's just awesome.